All right, guys. So what I'm going to show you today is how to map your drives. This you can do this. This is lo done locally. If you have a VPN, you'll be able to access these from on the go. But we're going to show you how to do it local because not everybody has an actual VPN running on their actual router. But you can still access your files locally as if they were a drive, a USB drive, or another hard drive in their computer. But it's on the network. It's so cool. So. Uh, what I'm going to show you today is how to do it with a MyCloud EX2 Ultra, MyCloud PR2100, MyCloud PR4100, MyCloud uh, EX4100. So I'm going to be showing you how to do that. It works with all these. So you'll be able to access your files and give access to users on your network. So it'll be pretty dang cool. So the first thing you want to do is open up your web browser. I have Chrome, so I'm going to open up Chrome. And I'm going to type in the IP address of my cloud. Mine is 192.168.1.117. It's already there because I did it earlier. So next is what you're going to want to do is sign in, obviously. Boom, we are in. Save. No way, Jose. All right. So cloud access. Remember, it's down right now. So it's, I disabled it. So because I want to reset the password for the actual cloud, not for the user login. Uh, so next, what I'm going to want to do is you want to make sure you have a static IP address. Every server, every NAS in your network needs a static IP address. It's just important. You have to have a static IP address. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to your settings. Because I use this. That's the sta 117 that I used to log in. I knew that IP address because I made it that. I wanted it something I could remember and it was easy to remember. You can do this in your router too. What you're going to want to do is do it on your server and then do it in your router too. It's better just to do it both times. Uh, do it in the network. And the reason why we do this is because if we do this and the router gets the power loss detected or turns off or has a firmware update or you unplug it and you plug it back in, it's going to give your server or your NAS a new IP address and all your drives that are mapped won't be accessible because it doesn't know that address. It's like a house, a mail person. I'm going to go deliver this package at this address. Okay, they changed their address. Well, how do I find their address now? You can't. So you got to make sure we have the same address. And it's static means it's going to keep it that way. So you're going to go, depending on what your IP, I'm going to show an IVP4. You hit static. It's going to be on DHCP. Uh, that means the router will just give it an IP address. No, we're like, no. We're going to tell the router and we're going to tell the cloud what IP address we want. So rule of thumb is keep it this way depending on what your network is topology keep this but change this last bit just change that last bit to make it easy for you guys i like 117 that's my daughter's birth date my other server is 87 and my other server is 82 for my wife and that's the way i like it i just like to know them so i know which server i'm going to this is the newest one my daughter is the newest part of our family so boom boom i got her date right there and i know which server i'm going to uh Subnet mask, 255 to 255, if your address is here, if it's different, then you know what you're doing and you know what subnet mask you need to do. Uh, gateway IP addresses is the router's IP address, the what you use to log into the router, what IP address your router gives you. If you don't know what IP address your router gives you, um, you can always do uh, IP uh, config uh, on command prompt, do run it as administrator, and it will tell you what your router's IP address is. This, we usually have it by default in there, but just in case it doesn't, you can do that too. DNS server is the server that you uh, go host out to the web where it grabs information. So you look up a website or go somewhere, it gets the server, and Cloudflare is one of the best. Awesome, this is the you need to put, 11141s, then 1.0.0.1. Put both of those and you're ready to go to the next step. Hit next, you hit next again, no VLANs, apply. Oops, there it goes, go save. It's already going to be saved, so it isn't going to do anything. It's just going to sit here. Otherwise, it would just say connected and you're good to go. Since it's the same, I'm just going to refresh it, boom, back in again. So it doesn't matter. So the next thing, once we do that, we got users. So we'll open up this PC. I got both my stuff on here right in this computer. Just remember, per login of Windows, so if you have a kid's account, wife account, you can't on the same server add multiple of these people. You can't like say, oh, I'm going to have, oh, I want Jeremy's files. I'm going to log in with Jeremy's password on this. I'm going to log in with Miles' password on this. It doesn't work that way. I have to do it all through my credentials right here. The first one, it doesn't have to be through mine, 
but whatever user I pick to log into this computer to map the drive, then I have to only use those on this side. You can do multiple servers. If you have multiple servers, then that's fine. So if it's me, like if I go to here, let's create a new user. We're gonna add a new user. We're gonna show you from brand new user. We're gonna call this test. Oh, whoops, test. And then we're gonna say password, no. Password, we're just gonna make this password one, two, oh, probably it's sensitive. I think it is, isn't it? They changed that from recently. Oh, uh, eight, six characters, character, yeah, okay. So we'll just make it, oh gosh, capital M, one, two, three, four, shift, oops, uh, shift at. Okay, see if I remember that. Let's write this down because I have a lot of enough stuff going through my brain right now to remember this just for now. Uh, otherwise, I won't have to worry once I show you guys how to map it. So it's uh, capital M, one, two, three, four, shift at. Okay, I can remember that. Boom, boom. Okay, we'll do it again. Capital M, uh, one, two, three, four, shift at. And then, I forgot that's not even eight yet. We'll do 87. 87. And I'll put that on the end of this so I don't forget. Perfect. All right. We'll go to apply. Boom. Updating. We got the user now. So if I go down to the user, uh, there's test. He has only his folder. Read access to. He has no access to any of these folders. I can give him access. And then when you map the drive, you'll have access to all these in the selection. I'm only giving him access to test right now. So if I go to shares, it always creates a folder for every user every time you add it. You can usually just like minus those out there. It's not going to delete the user. It's just going to give, you know, the user's still there, test. You're just getting rid of his share. I'll make him a share call. We'll just say new volume. We'll just say test. And we'll do volume. I can pick the volume, which hard drive I want. We'll just say volume one and hit apply. I'm not running RAID in this because I really don't care. I have a different backup for this one. So I just, I just don't want RAID on this one. So just whatever. That's why I select both drives. Otherwise, you'd just be one there if you're running RAID, depending on what RAID you're running. Um... So I like to turn off public. Obviously, we don't want public. Otherwise, anybody can access this. We just want to, we want it to be password by password. So whoever has used, if this was a user, anybody could access this. So if I turn this off, the users that I gave here have to put their pass password in when they're added to be able to log into this. So uh, blocks, I turn blocks off. You don't want any blocks on. And then we're just going to test, and we're going to give them full read access. Read and write, so he'll be able to read and edit files. If you give him read, he'll just be able to read and download the files, but he won't be able to delete or add files to the server itself. So just a little note on that. Okay, next thing what we're gonna do, since we got our password, we got our name as test, we're gonna start mapping some drives here. So uh, actually, you know what, we'll do one more. I'll add another drive. We'll just do test, just to show you two, and then we'll hit apply. Okay, perfect, off again, we need public off, blocks off, and then we're gonna go to, where's test two? Oh, that's right, because we're on this, we're already on the names here, because you can do it vice versa, it switches over, now the users, because if I go test, then there's test two here. So we're gonna go here, give them full access, boom. So now we're done with this page. We can close out of this. We are done. Now we're on Windows 11. Windows 10's the same way. If you're wondering Windows 7, I'm sorry, you should be getting off, but uh, Map Drive is usually up here too in one of these tabs. But as you can say, everything's getting away from Windows 7, 8, and stuff now. I mean, you can't even use Steam on it anymore. And then I forget what other program I was reading today, and it was a big company. It was like, oh, now you can't even use that. I was like, okay, cool. I guess you have to be on it. So next is what you're going to want to do is hit Map Drive. Now. You can give it whatever lever, letter you want. It really doesn't matter. Just with your preference if you want them alphabetical or in certain orders. Uh, folder name, just leave that blank. We're going to type in the IP address of our server. Now, if I go to... You have to hit the, the slash right here. It's the one right over the enter key. The center enter key. you got to hit that one. It's right over that one. you got to hit that once. Then you put your IP address in. Is 192.168.1.1. 117, whatever yours is, this is mine. Remember, we have different. Unless you want to copy mine, hey, don't matter. You can do mine too. We're on, it's on my own network. It's a different network, so it don't matter. We're going to hit browse. There's a server right there. 
Oh, those are all my caps corps. We're going to this one, the IP address. Don't worry about this. Just go to the IP address when you put in. We're going to go here, and we're going to try and map test. And it's going to be like, boom. Well, you got to put your password in. But my name isn't Miles, because this is my user of the computer. It's going to default to the user of the computer or the one that you logged in last. I got rid of all my map drives before. So I need to say, hmm. Well, I want to do more choices. I want to go to use different account. And we're going to put test. That's the user we made. Remember credentials, so I don't have to put this in again. We're going to hit our capital M. Uh, one, two, three, four, shift at, and we're going to hit OK. Now, it's going to go test again. Remember, we know this. Wait, I, didn't, wait, I have to do it one more time again. OK, capital M, one, two, three, four, shift. Oh, I did the wrong password. Whoops, forgot the uh, shift at. 87. Boom, boom. That's why it came up again. Went a little fast there. Sorry for you. All right. So now all that did was give me access to the drive. Now I got to select the folder. So it just said, hey, you can view the folders now. Now you got to select what folders that you have access to. And like if I click this one, let's just say Hargraves. And I put my password in. Uh, let's see the capital password again. So we got, uh, let's just do this. It's not going to work. Capital m one two three four shift at 87 and i hit okay it's not going to work because it i don't have access to that folder i didn't give access to my folder so it's not going to work but if i put that same password into test and i hit okay see it's right here test or hit finish boom we're right there we're right in the folder now I put, there's nothing in there i mean it shows there's stuff in there because it's sharing drive and it just shows the overall storage so you can have multiple users, uh, multiple little file systems on there that are separated, and this just shows you how much you have left to work with. So like if I go in here, I can throw whatever I want, drag this picture in here, boom, it's in there. Drag it off, uh, replace, yes, boom, it's there. Just like that. Now, I'm gonna show you something cool. Now, since you already have one mapped with that user, if I go to Let's see, where was, oh, that's right, maybe let's do this, that's right, close it out, bring it back, thank you, map drive. Now what I can do to make it quicker, since I already have it here, I can just delete this test, and then if I do uh, connect using different credentials, it'll ask me to pick which user again, but I want to, since I already used it to connect to uh, test one, the first test, I just want to connect to text two, so I'm just going to hit browse again. And then I'm going to hit my server. I'm going to hit test two. Since it's already have my credentials, hit apply, hit finish, and boom. Now I have both there mapped. Now they're both like hard drives like these, but except they're on the network, so it shows the network. But it's the same as a hard drive. Drag and drop. I can bring up one here if I wanted to, have it on this side. And then what I can do is um, bring up this one over here. And I can drag stuff between to whatever I need to. Or if I plug in a USB stick... I can drag stuff to a USB stick or another external drive or another server somewhere else if I wanted to. So if I like had stuff here, I could just drag this over to here and it would be here or drag this and it would be back on my main computer. Vice versa, just like a hard drive. Remember, you can do this over Wi-Fi, direct connect. It just depends on how good your stuff is, <laughs> how good your speeds will be. That's all it depends on. So obviously direct connect is better, but you can do crazy good speeds with Wi-Fi too. Uh, if you're a uh, router has a heck of good Wi-Fi and your laptop has a heck of good Wi-Fi, then you're going to be good. If you're just doing pictures and stuff like that and documents, that'll be nothing. If you're doing big, long videos, like hour long or, you know, you some gigs and start getting some gigs in, it could take a little bit of time. It just depends on how much you're doing. That's all it depends on. But it depends on your hardware, so I really can't tell you because everybody's hardware is different, but I just wanted to give you a, a little thing on that. There is one thing, though. Since I've already pre-done this with this computer... Uh, if we open up one of these and we were to drag something off here, like this, see how it just went over? I had no problems. So if I drag this again, it's going to have no problem place because there's already one here. It's going to bring it over there. But it wouldn't usually do it like good like that. There would actually be an error message saying, do, not an error, but it's saying, do you want to allow permissions? It gets really annoying and nobody wants that. So what you're going to want to go do is uh, internet options. I just had it there. Uh, uh, I just had it. Oh, there it is. Oh, here. Internet options. Then you're going to want to go to security. Then you're going to go to local. And then you're going to go to sites. 
and you're gonna, oh, it should automatically should be done. Go to advanced, and you're gonna wanna put your IP addresses of your servers. I have multiple servers, like I said, 87, 82, and, uh, and 17. So you're gonna wanna add that in there, just like this, and hit add, and hit close, and then you hit okay, and then you just hit okay, and then boom, you want that message will go away, and you can just use it without any prompting of every time you drag a file in, it'll say, do you trust this file? Do you trust this file? It's like, yes. That's why I mapped it myself. So just a little heads up. It would be annoying if you didn't, trust me. So yeah, that's about how you map your drives. And if you restart your computer, these are gonna come back right up like nothing. They're gonna come right here. The only way to get rid of them is if you right click them and disconnect. Just remember that it won't um, delete any of the data doing this. Just disconnect them from that computer that you're using and they'll have to put the password in again or if it's already pre-saved in because you can pre-save them like we did, it'll just come right back up again. But you can always change it on the server itself and then they'll have no access again too. Also, one thing I have to tell you, let me just show you this. Let me just do this. I just want to make sure, oh gosh darn it. Put that in wrong. Oh, I didn't, I did right, okay. Okay, let me just show you one thing here. So one thing you are gonna have to be worried though. I wanna tell you this right now. So all these are different shares, mom's phone, whatever, the blocks, whatever. If you minus this one of these out that has data on it, it will delete everything. The data is gonna be gone. So don't mic these out unless you know that you've cleared it off or if you offloaded it somewhere because if you minus the uh, shares, it's gone. The users, it don't matter. A test user, let's get rid of him now because I'm not going to use him anymore. Boom, he's gone. That's fine. That's totally fine. Uh, but I want the shares to be there. So test two, I don't need this one anymore because it was just for demonstration. So I'm just going to hit minus it out. Yes, deleting this share would delete all content configuration settings for this share. Yes, I know that. There's nothing on here, so I don't care. Go, delete it. Boom. We're going to do it again. Test, minus, boom. Done. All right, you can't delete public, you just can't. You try to minus it, it just won't let you do anything. Like, deleting public share is forbidden, so you can't delete that. I just disable it, that's what you gotta do. But yeah, I hope this video helped you for some office people that need to get their files and use them. Uh, and I hope you guys can get back and running while the cloud's down. And this is just a better way. If you're using the web interface, mycloud.com, to log in and then do files that way, ugh. If you're local, the map drive is the way to do it. It's faster than SMB, uh, it's a newer protocol, and it's just way better. Just do the map drives. Now, if you have a VPN, if I had a VPN and I logged into my server and I had my laptop with me and the drives were mapped from me using it you know, locally, I, as soon as I connect to my VPN, the drives would, they, 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 they're not here right now, but if they were mapped here, they'd be accessible again. So if I were to leave the house, with the map drives, the map drives are just gonna have X's on them because I'm not on my network. It can't find that router. I mean, not the router, the server. But if I was in the go and I log into my VPN, being on my home network, it'll be like, oh yeah, we know this computer. Yeah, Miles, there's the server, boom. And your drives would be accessible on the go. So I just wanted to put that out there. Hey, if you guys like these videos, like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you guys don't miss any of my videos. That's the hard thing. I really just wanted to make this video for you guys. I know a lot of people in the comments are like, how do you do it? How do you do it? So I wanted to make it for you guys. I know it's very important and everybody's stressful about this. My wife is too. She's like, I want to do my phone pictures. So plug it in the computer. But she has been too long not having to plug her phone in the computer and she does not want to have to do that anymore. She's like, I'll just wait. That's <laughs> what she said, I'll just wait. But yeah, you guys know I make these videos for you guys. So you guys have a rock and rolling day. Take some stress off of you. Peace out. And hope this Western Digital thing gets back up and running soon. But hey, have a rock and rolling day.